Hello, welcome back. If you guys didn't watch my last video on the Mega Cab, um, yeah, it's complete and it is awesome. But I also said that I was gonna do some motor upgrades and uh, that includes more airflow because these stock Cummins are so restricted, it's not even funny. The carbon buildup that these motors put out is insane. So what we're gonna do today is increase the airflow on my motor and um, it could probably use that because I'm sure it's very restricted. I know these stock intakes on these trucks are like, this wide of an air opening. So SPE sent us out a bunch of parts that we were going to install today. Starting off with number one, a grid heater delete plate because on these six sevens, they have these little bolts inside the grid heater that tend to wear out and crack off. And then that's a bolt that falls right into your engine and pretty much destroys your motor. And the last thing I want to do is destroy this motor again, because this is the second engine that this truck has. And uh, the grid heater needs deleted in my opinion. Number one, so it has a better cold start and it sounds like a monster truck when it starts up in the cold. Number two is because I don't wanna wreck my engine. If that bolt snaps off and falls into my motor and does that, I'm going to be so livid, I will probably just burn this truck to the ground and that is the last thing I want to do. So, right here we have a few boxes from SPE. This right here is a EGR delete kit that they offer. So you have your nice tube that goes to it that actually deletes the EGR itself. You have the fitting that hooks up to your stock coolant hose. You have this bracket right here. And I've used one of these brackets in the past and I've used other brackets in the past. And this bracket right here is literally made specifically for these six, seven Cummins. And other brackets that you may get do not fit. You gotta alter them, nothing fits. So what this is, this mounts to the side of the manifold. Your coolant hose hooks up into here and then this bolts to the manifold like I was just saying and everything just sits like that and you have a nice logo on it that um, you can powder coat this, do whatever you want with it and this will definitely be helpful on this motor because right now the stuff is just hanging. You have the block off plates for the manifold itself, new gaskets, another block off plate, all of the hardware and then this right here bolts onto the top of your intake horn and blocks off the actual EGR on top of the intake, which is very nice. It definitely uh, look a lot better underneath there than a EGR. Over here we have the grid heater delete plate that we got sent out to us. And this thing looks a lot nicer than the stock one in my opinion. So it comes with the manifold. It comes with the uh, gasket for it, it's a nice billet machined piece you can put your sensor back inside of there then your intake bolts onto there on the stock ones the grid heater sits underneath this and in my opinion it just restricts everything so getting rid of that is going to save my motor and this stuff's going to look pretty good on the engine versus all the stock stuff right here we have a intake manifold itself and this thing is a monster literally it's huge um yeah, it's literally massive. You have the spot for your sensor up top right here. You have a massive airflow space to uh, let your motor breathe. I have the stock one right here off the engine that um, is built up very bad with carbon. And this right here will give you guys an idea on how much different the airflow is. So um, if you can't tell the difference, you should probably look into like the specs on this stuff. But we'll bolt this onto the engine, then we have the delete plate that matches right here. That'll sit up there. And basically, when this is all installed, that is the difference you will see underneath your hood. That is like five times bigger than the stock one. And this thing should definitely push a lot more air than what it does now. And that's good. So hopefully we can build like 4,000 PSI of boost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start tearing apart the motor, getting everything set up to hook up all of the stuff to my motor. And I cannot wait to see how this truck performs, especially in the towing aspect, because I tow a lot with this truck and uh, we need all the air we can get. And maybe one day we'll get into doing a compound turbo kit on it. So now we are going to get into taking apart the air side of the motor and getting these parts installed. That kind of 
apart very easily. I'm actually surprised. And uh, this is my first time taking off one of these on a 6.7. And it honestly isn't too bad. The fuel line out of the way, make sure we don't break nothing. And look at all the buildup inside that motor. That is actually insane. Back to what I was talking about. See this bolt right here? That um, is very prone to snapping off. And the last thing I want is that to snap off and land in my motor. So we are going to get a shop vac, suck all of that garbage out of there because that looks like crap. And uh, I'll clean it up, get the new one installed, and we should be ready to rip. So basically, out uh, with the old and with the new. And then this sensor will come out of here, screw into the top of this plate, put a new gasket on there, and we'll be ready to rip. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And the airflow is literally a very noticeably difference. Let's get the sensor out of it and get this new one installed. We probably should wipe the sensor off. That might be a smart idea. If only we could find a rag. Look at that. All that garbage that was flowing through my motor is not healthy. Now we can screw this one into the new intake manifold and just like that. That sensor screws in there. We'll tighten it up. Look at that, good as new. Now, the time has come, we can uh, drop that on the ground. Now you can see everything that is going through this motor. That's disgusting. That's like, it's honestly depressing because, you know, I'd like my truck to run good and I can only imagine now what's all gonna come out of this motor with the vacuum. <laughs> That is gross. Oh my goodness. We won't be needing this anymore. This can come out of here. The old gasket. Not too shabby. Probably start vacuuming out everything. Hit the air filter. Known that you would use a, uh, a vacuum cleaner to clean your motor. That's probably not normal. We'll store that right there. That's honestly a good spot. When you're detailing your engine bay, just take your vacuum and just shove it next to the uh, fuse panel, and it'll definitely ride out a lot better. So the next step is to grab a wire brush or something to clean up that head. I know we got a wire brush. I spoke too soon. Got a wire brush to clean up the uh, head itself. So what I'm doing now is I just got the grid heater delete onto the motor, got the gasket on there, just set the fuel rail back down. They actually give you these nice little spacers to put underneath right here. And that spaces your fuel rail up over the top of your grid heater plate and makes it a lot easier to bolt it back in. Now I'm gonna get all of the bolts back into it get this thing nice and tight to my motor and then we'll be ready to party with this truck besides uh it, it could really use twin turbos so maybe next week we'll get twin turbos for it and then my luck it'll blow up again and that's not in the books for this month i tell you what Having power tools is a blessing. I remember back when I was younger, not having power tools sucked and I've done this on like a second gen and other vehicles that I had back in the day. And now having power tools makes life a lot easier. Without power tools, this would have took me like four hours, not 20 minutes. So when you buy their intake manifold, they give you a new 
number one cylinder injection line because that thing is so big, it has so much airflow space, you gotta actually push that number one cylinder port that much higher in the air. So we're gonna bolt on this injection line really quick. Obviously it's brand new, she'll screw on nice and good. Got the intake on right here, as you guys can see. That thing looks amazing. We got the boost tube hooked up right there. If you look, I got a new boost tube clamp because uh, I kind of sent it home and snapped the old clamp that was on it. So we throw a new one on it. Now we are working on getting my old bracket off to the side of this engine because this right here is all that has been holding on for like the last year is this bracket. So that's what you get when you buy a normal delete kit. This is what you get when you buy a nice delete kit from SPE. So this right here, runs out of the garbage. And now we gotta get a socket, take off the heat shield, take off two manifold bolts, and then we will be able to get inside there and bolt in this bracket, and we should be ready to roll. But I do need compound turbos like I was saying. So one of these days, when I get around to it, I'll end up throwing compound turbos on it. But for now, this right here is going to go right inside of here somewhere. Like this. It holds on this line for this valve. That's out of the way. You know what's good? These bolts aren't breaking off, which means when we second gen swap this thing and put like four turbos on it, I don't gotta worry about breaking off my manifold bolts. Now, you guys see we did everything to the engine bay and uh, it looks amazing. So, project complete. But, we always gotta do a test drive and uh, hopefully has more throttle response. So let's go for a red. Taking it on its first test drive now with the new air stuff we just put on the motor and uh, I can already tell like a throttle response difference with it, probably because it has, you know, 10 times more air going to it, but, oh yeah, this is a stock tune as well, and this thing rolls out. It's like half throttle right there. Oh yeah, this thing has way more power and it's building like 40,000 PSI of moves. What we can do twin turbos, massive injectors, stud the engine for the second time because the first motor I did studs, built the head, did everything to it, spent like six grand on the top end of that motor and just for it to explode. And now the motor's probably in a junkyard somewhere. I don't know what happened to it actually. It might still be at Gabe's. Yeah, anyways, the old motor for this truck, I had everything done to, to do all these supporting mods and uh, that never did it. So we're back to square one with this truck and now we just gotta build everything from scratch, which is fine. A lot of things that I will change now with this engine, and uh, mainly I just wanna keep it reliable for towing because this truck still does have to tow my gooseneck, which is really the only reason I wanna do compounds to have some more boost. When I am going through the mountains with my trailer, and uh, right now, it's pretty quick for just being all stock, and all it is is just got a tune on it. It has all stuff we just put on it, onto the motor, and yeah, so we are headed right now on a little test drive. We're gonna get back to the shop. I'm going to rinse this thing off. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about these products because in my opinion, the video just doesn't do justice on how much bigger these products actually are and the airflow that they give out versus the stock components. So now the block to the shop and wash the truck off and talk about it. So we're back at the shop, but uh, my hose is leaking for the power washer. That's very unfortunate. Okay. This should work now. Okay, it's on. The foam cannon. Uh, yeah. This is honestly my favorite part about the day is washing all the salt off my vehicle because right now it is disgustingly dirty. So. Now. What's good as this? So the grid heater plate that I installed in this truck 
it changes the risk of you losing your engine because that bolt snapping off, like I was saying, basically inside the whole video, if that does that, then your motor is wrecked. That intake manifold itself, that thing, I think I read it's like two times the size of the stock one. I showed you guys how the video, it is a drastic change to the airflow. It has all the nice ports to where if you do still have the EGR on your vehicle, you can put the EGR back on it. Me, obviously, I like the party, so we won't need any of that nonsense on top of that. And the performance that this truck has now with that intake and the grid heater is like insanely different. Then the EGR kit that I have on it has that nice black bracket you guys seen us put on, that nice black top piece. The top of the manifold block off place where the EGR was, everything matches perfectly underneath the hood. I'm sure eventually I'll get into powder coating everything, but for now, it looks good, it functions, and I wanna get basically the whole entire motor stuff that I wanted to do done to the truck before I go powder coating anything because obviously if I powder coat something now, by the time I do compounds and all that fancy stuff, I'm gonna to wanna to change the color and that's just probably not a good idea. So we are leaving that stuff black for now, but as you guys just seen, this truck performs a lot better. I am like excited now to have this truck back on the road. I have been driving it for like the last four days now. We went ahead, we got it aligned, it drives perfect. The only thing I want to do next to this truck though is the rear airbags and then I have the external reservoir shocks. Actually, those are sitting right here. And these shocks right here that I have will bolt into the front of the truck. Right here, I'll make some brackets that hold that shock right there. Once that's on, that little cavity right there will look a lot better and the ride quality will improve another 100 times better. But for now, this truck runs, drives amazing. The new transmission is inside of it. And yeah, that is about it for today's video. Huge shout out to SPE Lab for sending us out all of these good parts because uh, it definitely restored a lot of power inside my truck and having that carbon buildup out of that intake system is a huge plus. So like I was saying, we have this truck going on. I won't show you guys much, but the silver truck is right there. And uh, yeah, that thing is gnarly. And then obviously my big gray dually, but that thing kind of just chilled in the corner. So. Like I was saying, with that being said, this is going to end today's video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give me some suggestions in the comments about a turbo setup I could do on this truck for towing. I am not too smart when it comes to like the actual mechanical and like the flows of the turbo. I kind of just slap the parts on the motor and uh, as long as it goes fast, rolls cold, is in tows and doesn't burn my engine down, I'm happy with this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.